All right, hello, my name is Jeff Inman from ISC. Uh, uh, today I'm gonna be working with the micro lab and talking a little bit about load transfer rigging. So uh, last time I was on the, the uh, tree stuff series, the, uh, I was speaking on span rigging. So the main concept of span rigging, if you reference that video, was to basically have mechanical advantage along with having a piece to move from one point to the next. Kind of the problem with that though is that there are kind of advanced rigging techniques and forces that I'm not gonna get into today because we could spend a lot of time talking on that. But it also requires a lot of rope. So what I'm gonna talk about today is similar in a way but it's uh, still requiring a little bit of additional rope uh, but it's it's a little bit easier to comprehend, I think, for the day-to-day -day arborist. So this is our tree that we're gonna be uh, rigging out of today. What I have is an uh, overhead tie-in point um, with um, a lower in line that's got a block up high, redirected to a block on the back side of the tree, running down to a porter app. The problem is that I need to get this limb that I'm going to remove instead of coming down right here because I've got say a house or a pool or something over here. Look at this house that I can just pull right into the drop zone. Look at that. Right, so not necessarily something that I can uh, maybe bring this down right next to the house and you know maybe have a fence. There's other obstacles that I need to get this debris here to way over here. There are other techniques I'm sure that have been talked about before with using speed line rigging and um, or double whip tackle or things, but I'm I'm kind of trying to approach this from a bit more of a, uh, a basic uh, rigging kind of concept with equipment that more than likely you already have on your truck. Um, so again, if this is a limb to be removed, what I'll do and I should say this, um, I just did a project with one of our teams the other day, removing a tree, doing it pretty much this exact way. But I'll take and put a half inch and a running bowling to cinch it off with my initial high tie-in point. But then what I did is I set up an additional rigging point on the back side of the tree with a secondary rope so that I could pull this up and a lot of times when I like to do this if I can get out to the, the tips of a limb I'll put it out on the end of the limb. So that way, I'm gonna come around the house or underneath the tree. I'll go ahead and put the lower in line through the porter app, tighten that up a good bit. Since I'm by myself, I'll just lock off the porter app. So now what I have is my initial rigging line is set up to make a, uh, a cut right here at the butt, do a more traditional butt hitch type rigging. But I'll have my other grounds personnel tighten up on this line here. And a lot of times when I do this, I like to have, sorry, have this line be somewhat handhold only or incorporate some level of aerial friction up at this point, whether that's a rigging wrench, whether that's additional rings, a safe block, some additional type of aerial friction so that way they're not committed to a porter up on the ground and if it's in somewhat of a tight space they can maneuver themselves with the lower in line. Um, so in this situation I'm trying to avoid this house. I'm gonna get back underneath. I'll make a notch
So again, I've kind of made this as a directional notch so that it's pointed somewhat to bisect the angle from where gravity's trying to pull it and where I'm trying to get it to eventually come around to. So what I'll do is, actually, can I bring in a ground person at this moment? So if I could get my brother Zach to step around here. So if you just hold that tight, what I'm gonna do is make a back cut and cut until it starts to move a little bit, in which case, because my aerial friction that I've set up in the air, I can get my ground personnel to go ahead and start pulling on this line a little bit. So go ahead and start pulling. All right, now hold that. So you can see how, because of the angle here, it's actually pulling that up a little bit. Right, it's potentially a bad situation as it's trying to break the hinge in the wrong way, almost lifting it up before it starts to swing around. So actually I'll have Zach go ahead and let it back off a little bit, a little bit more. So that's actually a pretty good amount of tension. I'm gonna go ahead and finish cutting this and let gravity take over. So it's a bit more dynamic, but now, does that go ahead and pull up? Keep pulling up. All right, that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and come down here to my Porter app and have Zach continue to hold that tight. And then the two of us together are actually gonna work this limb down away from the, the hazard into another drop zone. So I'm gonna have Zach, to, again, so if you look at this, how it's in the rigging, we've got one rope that's more on the tip side of the limb and one that's more on the butt side of the limb. So typically, especially in this scenario, if this, if the tip end has a bunch of foliage, all the, the branches, and we're bringing it back through a live section, we probably want to have the butt end come down first, or at least this is what we were doing in the, in the tree I was removing the other day. So what I'll do now is I'll slowly let down on my end of the rope to basically invert it. So Zach, go ahead and start letting your end down. And we'll work together to have the piece come down on the other side of the fence. Maybe that's where the chip truck is. So that way it just basically floats from one side of the tree to the other while utilizing ropes rather than trying to use our manpower. I mean, you look at me, I'm not a very big guy. I'm not trying to like pull things and muscle my way through things any more than I have to. If I can use ropes and physics basically to move the tree with the tree to the place where it's easiest on my ground personnel in a manner in which like our whole job continues to flow rather than just bombing big stuff on them all the time, keep that work pace flowing, utilizing the gear that I already had on the truck to get stuff down and to the chipper. Uh, yeah, so ISC, we have all sorts of rigging gear available, um, several different ranges of arborist blocks that allow for high efficiency rigging, uh, but new last year's we have a rigging wrench. Uh, so I mentioned about having aerial friction in the tree. For those of you who are familiar with SRS climbing and the rope wrench in general, we essentially beef that up a little bit and inverted it so that now you can use a, a, rent, uh, a rigging wrench, a wrench in your rigging uh, to be able to handle either a 150 pound load or a 265 pound load, depending on which version you have, uh, easily with just you holding on to it. That's not utilizing a porter app or anything, that's just you holding on. So it makes concepts like this super doable and very easy 
and relatively minimal on the people on the ground. So you only have one quarter app on the tree and it's a little less confusing, especially when you start adding additional ropes. If you can separate the friction points, if it makes sense in a tree to do that, uh, to make it easier on the ground personnel. Um, the climber just deals with it the same way he or she otherwise would have, but if you can make everything flow down on the ground uh, in a much more efficient manner, the whole job will go better. So the rig and wrench is kind of aimed at, at doing concepts similar to that. Thank you.